Today we're going to be engraving on some of the weirdest surfaces ever. Yes, from cookies to this giant marshmallow. Oh, look at you, marshmallow. Give me a second. Look at you. You've got quite the body. You are voluptuous. You are beautiful. You are the marshmallow. Have you grains ever tried engraving? Up until now, it's been one of those things I've wanted to try, but I've only seen those engraving pens that are pretty long to use. And sometimes if you want to make a very elaborate design, it is just way too time consuming and I ain't about that. And that's why today we're going to be trying the Creality Falcon. Now this is sent to me, but all opinions are my own and I'll definitely be honest about it. So we're gonna be experimenting. To the machine. And here's the setup. This is what I'm going to use in order to try and engrave on everything. And you can see some of my past attempts over here. My only worry is the clearance for this marshmallow is just, we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to smush it. So we're gonna, <laughs> I might have to cut this in half to get something rolling. Let's choose the design. All right, so there's another sharp pointy thing. I figure we're gonna go down the middle. I kind of messed it up. Okay, we're gonna go down the middle. <laughs> you know what? I probably should have gotten water. <laughs> Is this it? I think we got it. It's down the middle. We're not gonna do the smushy part, but because this is sticky, it might actually work better. Okay, let's get a close up on that. Yeah, let's get let's get close up on that. We're gonna try and get some good texture going on here. So this is the image we're going to do on the marshmallow, and this is what it looks like inputted into the program. All right, so we're just gonna place our marshmallow right here. I'm gonna smush it down just a smidge so it stays stuck. Oh yeah, that is in there. And in theory, it should look like this. <laughs> so let's see. And so you can see the time lapse. I have to say I was a little worried because as it's engraving, it's a lot of heat. And I could see kind of flames starting, but luckily there's some air circulation in there and it was kind of snuffing out the flames. Definitely don't do this at home without proper supervision. <laughs> but it was really cool seeing it etch into the marshmallow. I was kind of worried that it wouldn't work, but I'm glad it did. The settings were a little on the strong side, so lesson learned. Uh, hello? What happened here? It's almost like we're missing the entire outline. All right, we're trying again. All right, you come here with me and let's take a closer look. Uh, uh, uh. Are you ready for the big reveal? And three, two, one, ta-da! It is looking not quite the best. It's kind of looking a little sad, but at the same time, not a bad start for something that we are trying out and experimenting with. I'm sure by the end of the video, we will refine it a lot more. And I have to tell you, the entire room smells like burnt sugar. Definitely make sure you have ventilation. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a bite out of this just because I am curious. It's gotta be edible. If we're gonna engrave a marshmallow, we better eat it. So I'm gonna take a little bite here. And mmm. Oh, that's delicious. It's like burnt marshmallow when you go camping. This is absolutely phenomenal. Oh, this is good. Probably just need to tweak the settings, but I like this. And so now that you got a preview of the machine, today our goal is to try and make some really cute and quirky decorations. Everything from a custom tic-tac-toe board all the way to some weird coasters. But before we get to that, let's check out more of what our machine can do and check out what it does to cookies. Now I know a lot of people do engraving on different things like cakes and bread. Here we're going to try a tea cookie, which let's just open it up. Obviously this side of the cookie is very textured, so we're gonna turn it around and do something cute on this side for this case. Let me show you what we're gonna do. And so for this cookie, I went ahead and did a sketch. Now, please remember these are sketches. They're not absolute drawings I'm spending hours on. I am literally spending like five minutes on these sketches. I decided to make a cute little dragon holding its cookie and it's like, it's my cookie. So now we are going to be claiming this cookie as our own. Let's see what this is going to look like in the engraver. All right, we're gonna shove our cookie in here. 
and here's what it's supposed to look like so let's go ahead and start and this time lapse is just absolutely adorable because we get to see how the machine is working now one of the mistakes i noticed that i made is i didn't do fill line for the text itself everywhere else looks pretty cute the details could have been better but that's probably my line work art again these are just sketches they are not actual drawings so this is another lesson that i'm learning for the next project all right let's take it to my desk and see what it actually looks like are you ready for the cuteness of this cookie and three two one -dang! it is absolutely adorable i have to say that this cookie is just absolutely cute i feel like this has so much potential for customizations for birthday parties parties maybe even wedding favors of cookies and names I don't know, there's a lot of potential for this for those of you who have little businesses for treats. Now the next materials I want to engrave in are materials like cloth and metal. And for both of them, I kind of want to create a keychain. In the first case, I'm going to be using my own logo for my gaming channel, Raging Raccoon Gaming. Hey, if you're not following me on Raging Raccoon Gaming, we do Fortnite and we do Cozy Gaming. So definitely join me there, link will be in the description. But here's my logo. And we're gonna go ahead and put on that rock on raccoon and see what it looks like on either of them both of them on both of them now i know i said i wanted to do leather and metal but i didn't have leather keychain but i do have a coaster so we're gonna make a leather coaster we're going to make a metal keychain and a wooden keychain so i'm curious how the settings are going to be different on each one of these surfaces so i'm gonna put the metal right here figured best to start with this one and so it went ahead and engraved. It's a little bit wonky. And as you can see here, it's kind of wonky, a little muddy. So we're gonna try and see if we can do even better. Round two. And from this angle, you can see there's no more lights coming out from the laser anymore. Um, yeah, please let us know what's happening and why it's happening. And so that was a fail because I didn't read the instructions and the instruction said, hey, don't use metal or shiny pieces. So we actually destroyed the laser. We contacted Creality and they sent us a new one because that was my fault. Don't use it on metal. Definitely use it on non-shiny things. All right, so it has been a couple of weeks. I went to Japan and then to Scotland and now we're resuming our project. What I really wanted to do was a project. And in this case, I wanted to do a tic-tac-toe axolotl. I've seen tic-tac-toe boards go absolutely viral all over TikTok. TikTok, tic-tac-toe on TikTok. <laughs> and since I wanted to do something cute and use some of the acrylics and woods as a bit of a mixed media, we are going to go ahead and do it. And I know I said I would do leather, but because I kind of broke the laser previously i'm like you know what let's just get straight into the project i actually want to do <laughs> so we're skipping the leather okay so it has been a few days as actually it's, it's been a couple of weeks learning this machine over here actually takes a few weeks so th there's there's some learning curve here and then there's a hose in yeah yeah that hose right there you, you know what that hose is for it said that we don't from from the smell because the smell is pretty intense. But here we are in front of the computer and what we're going to do now is we're going to put the pieces together. We have our axolotl, we have our shrimpy, we have our tadpole, so let's put them together. So now that our design is done, we have our basso wood. It's not that heavy. It's actually pretty, I thought it would be less noisy than that, but it actually sounds pretty noisy. We're gonna go ahead and put that in because the entire design is going to ideally be a little bit more acrylic. So we're just gonna cut out the shapes and take it from there. So it took about five minutes. And as you can see, it was really cutting in. Let's get a little closer. And here's, oh my goodness. It's kind of like a puzzle that you have when you're a little green. Hang on, let's try that. We have the, the T. Wait, what? Oh, there it is. Okay, that was the other side. We have the L. And this is kind of, this is kind of fun. Okay, but this is what we have. Photo op. <laughs> no, but seriously, this is what it looks like in the back. It's a little burnt, but that's the whole point of the laser. So now that we have this base, we're gonna go ahead and put the other shapes everywhere else. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so here's the base, and here's the other wood I was thinking of doing. 
and this is basically what it would look like so whatever acrylic that we have in here would look more opaque even though they're translucent right kitty editor i don't need you to mock me i don't know kitty no kitty editor i don't need you mocking all right, so now we have all of our pieces cut up and ready. We used a mixture of wood and acrylics. And I think this is going to be an absolutely adorable little axolotl. And as you can see, I decided to go ahead and draw a little shrimp and we have also a little tadpole. Now, the reason I went with shrimp and tadpole is because that's what I looked online on what axolotls eat. So they do look cute, but it is a little dark at the same time. And the engraver did an amazing job cutting them so dang tiny. Look how small this is. Just to give you an idea, here it is next to my nail. It is absolutely tiny. Look at the little feet and everything. So the detailing on this is pretty good. And here's the tadpole. What we did is we actually painted the board and cut through it. But the issue is we tried to do the same thing with pink and the shrimp. And for some reason, the engraver didn't want to cut all the way through. My guess is maybe the shininess was just not agreeing with the actual laser. And we know from previously that using metal was an absolutely bad idea that ruined the actual laser. Don't do that. Some lasers can do it. This one, no. So don't be a Jackie and read the actual instructions. <laughs> now to get everything nicely situated here, we're going to use a piece of wood and we're going to place everything on top of it. So once we get our main piece glued on, I'm going to be using a wood glue. And I'm just basically going to spread the glue on the surface that has all the different holes just to make sure that I don't mess up on where the gaps are. And then I'm going to put them together. Now this takes approximately 10 minutes, not to fully set, but at least to hold on to each other. So I'm just putting a heavy piece of material on top just to keep them together. All right, now in theory, it should be more or less settled. And now it's going to be about fitting all the pieces. Technically, they should fit like a glove. And the answer is yes. But we do need to glue it in though. But the question is, is it this way or that way? No, that way. Like a saw. Oh gosh, I have to remember. I think this is gonna go here. This is one that one this one <laughs> that one yes okay we got it oh no I have to take it out okay got you now to get the wood and the actual acrylic to stick it together I'm going to be using the well bond and there's a little bit of a gap here so I'm gonna try and glue again where they meet like so and then we're gonna put something heavy on top of it again. I feel like having the base as flat as possible is going to be very important. Otherwise, I don't want like shaky things. And so the first thing that has to go in is the base of the face, which is the green outline. And now what we're doing is I'm trying to fit in the different little gill looking things. I know they're not called gills. Kitty Edder, you're gonna have to correct me and educate everybody. Education time my kitty. Once those are in, we're going to put the yellow part of the face. I am not sure why I'm struggling here because all the pieces were fitting properly. Maybe by having the piece of wood compressing everything, it's making it a little harder. So I'm getting my brother to help me. All right, my brother got it to work. It just needed a little angling and a little musculature. So it's all good now. Let's move on. All right, now that that's done, as you can see, the eyes do have black and white on them. I have to say that cutting that tiny little bit of white acrylic for some reason was a little bit difficult on the machine, but we still managed to get it done, but it was quite the struggle for some reason. And now for the red cheeks, everything fit in just beautifully, like a puzzle that's always belonged there. And now it's time to put the actual text. So the XO Lottle, because I love puns and I love play on words. And that one went pretty much as expected. All right, now that that's done, we have our final touch here. So I just wanna make sure that I give enough space for everything. So I'm going to give a little bit of clearance here and here. Yeah, we have clearance, like so. 
I feel like I could bring this maybe a little higher so we can bring this right there. I think this is a good spot so that the bottom parts, since it's pretty narrow down here, we could do something like this. It's a little off center. I know some of you are going to yell at me, but these are supposed to represent the teeth. Nobody's teeth are perfect, okay? <laughs> All right, I shouldn't put too much, just enough to stay on there without actually coming off. Sometimes less is more. Okay, like so, like so, and like so. All right, I'm looking through the camera here to see as good as it gets, and I think here, perfect. And I'm just gonna push down. And I know there's some extra that are sticking out here. I'm just gonna take a Q-tip and clean out whatever's sticking out just so that I can get rid of some of the excess. And ta-da, here it is. I probably shouldn't have put that glue in the clear parts, but I didn't know any better. So now we just have it there. I could have removed it, but I'm like, you know what? It is the charm of homemade now. <laughs> you know what? Let's test it out and do a game of tic-tac-toe. All right, so I'm gonna be shrimp. I don't know, sh should I start? Go ahead. Okay, <laughs> he's giving a smug look. I'm gonna start my shrimpy up here. Oh, taking the safe spot. Okay, okay. I'm gonna put my shrimpy here. Oh, that's a nice block. Okay, look at you, Mr. Experience. <coughs> okay, it's gonna be a stale toe, isn't it? Here? <laughs> Wait, you hesitating? Okay. Yep, looks like it's a stale. But you know what, this is really cute. No, I see what you're gonna do. Wow. I won. Wow. <laughs> In true brother fashion. So let me know what you think. I have to say again, a huge thank you to Creality for sending me the engraver. It is quite the hefty machine to actually have at home, which is pretty neat. I have to say though, there still is a huge learning curve for me to understand how the machine behaves with different materials. But the fact that I've also learned that the engraver is great for engraving on ceramics. So I can make more custom items with my own creations on other things. Again, not sponsored, not affiliated, but if you wanna check them out, I will leave their link down below. And if you want to watch more videos of me trying things, make sure you check up here. If you wanna catch something a little different, make sure you check down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.